Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, how to use Excel to do some kind of random sampling or random trials. And I'm going to focus on discrete random variables. Okay, discrete random variables. So uh, we all know that when we are rolling a dice, that creates some kind of random outcomes. I may get one, I may get five, I may get two. Is it possible for us to use Excel to generate some random outcomes of rolling dice? Of course, that's possible. So the most easiest way of doing that is to use the function called rand between. Rand between asks us to provide a bottom value and a top value. For example, when we are rolling dice, then the bottom value is 1 and the top value is 6. Then this function means, please give me a random number between 1 and 6. And for rent between, that, uh, those values are integer values. So if I do this, I'm going to see mm, 5. If I do it again, okay, rent between, again, I want to do 1 and 6, you can see I get 6 and also for the first value it becomes 3. So in Excel, as long as you do anything, as long as you do anything, those values, those functions will be invoked again. Or if you want to see them invoked, you may press on your F9. And if you are using Mac, maybe there are some other uh, buttons. But anyway, in Excel, if you press F9, you're going to uh, roll the dice again, roll the dice again. Okay. And that means if you have, let's say, 10 function calls, then you may see how they change, how they change when you roll the dice, roll the dice. So that means as long as I do 10 function calls like this, that means I am rolling the dice for 10 times, something like that. So I can then ask many questions about, well, what's the average values, what's the median, what's the variance, whatever. But anyway, that's some outcome of rolling dice. So that means if you have, um, if you have six uh, teammates and you, are, you want to roll a dice to decide who is going to do the presenter for your case study final project, well, all you need to do is to call rent between one and six and then you will see who will be the presenter. What if you only have three students? Well, why don't you just do one to three? Then it's going to be a random number between one and three. Whenever you use random between, that uh, all the values in your region will have the same probability to show up. So when you do rent between one to three, you're going to see that roughly each number gets uh, one third as the probability. If you want to double check that, then maybe you want to, for example, get a lot of random numbers here. Okay, a lot of random numbers. And then how about we count their, the, the outcomes or, or the occurrence of each value. So I'm going to count all the values here. And I want to ask how many of them are G, what's that, G2. How many of them are 1? They are 29. And how many of them are each values? We can see that roughly they have the same probabilities, right? In this particular trial, we get about uh, a more uh, 2 and 3 and 6. That's possible. But if you roll the dice many, many times, each time you see they get some different values, different occurrences. And uh, in general, they are always almost always between 25 to 35. Basically, that just means they are random. Okay. So that's rent between. When you have four values, six values, 100 values, you want to rent between 60 to 100, you can just do that. Okay, so that's good. But we also need to deal with some other situations that your random dice rolling has different probabilities for different outcomes to occur. For example, here, suppose I have a dice that one has a higher probability to occur, 0 0.4. Two has 20% and all other values has 1%. How is it possible for me to roll, uh, to, to simulate that probability distribution? That's still possible. I'm going to use another function called rent. Okay, 
For rand, you don't need to enter any、um, any parameter or argument. You just get a set of values, random values directly, and all those random values are between zero and one, and it's a fractional value. Okay, so with all these values and our probability table, now I'm going to do a conversion to get the corresponding values. So how should I do that? Basically, what I should do is that I'm going to say, well,、uh, I have my cumulative probability table. So that means if I roll,、uh, if I roll a dice or a continuous dice and get 0.22, I'm going to say, okay, 0.22 is between 0 to 0.4. I'm going to say I get one as my dice rolling outcome. 0.67. 67 is between 60 and 70. That means I get two. How about 0.01? I get one. How about 0.85? I get five, and so on and so on and so on. So that means, as long as I create a few、uh, intervals and give those intervals different lengths, then I'm going to be able to map these random values between zero and one into those intervals. And then, if the interval is larger, I'm going to have that particular value with a higher probability. So, how to do that? Let me complete this very quickly. We're going to use the function lookup, and、uh, to use lookup, we know for each outcome value, I need to provide the lower bound for it. So that means the number here should be zero, and this number should be 0.4, and then we copy and paste. So that means if I see a value between zero and zero point four, I get one. Between zero point four and zero point six, I get two, and so on, and so on, and so on. And suppose I want to keep these values. I don't want to have them changing. I'm going to paste values. Okay. So now column A is not used anymore. Now all I need to do is to look up. Right. I have a value here. I want to see in which. Oh, sorry. Here. In which interval it belongs to, okay? And then if I get that interval, I'm going to correspond to one dice value. That's one. Indeed, it is right. And then we can do this. For example, 0.78 is between here. We get four. Uh, 0.95. 0.95 is here. We get six. So very quickly, you may see that it's more likely for us to get one and two. Because the interval is larger, the interval here is larger, so it's more likely for us to get a random value that falls in zero point as between zero and zero point four, and that gives us one. Okay, and it's not so easy to get four or five or six or three, yeah. And that's how we do this. If we want, we may still、uh, do some other modifications. Like how about this? I'm going to say with more probability, I'm going to get 0.6, and with low probability, I'm going to get one. You can see that our functions will change the intervals here, and indeed here we get more six. Okay, more six. So this is how we simulate、uh, random events, discrete random events, when their these、um, probabilities are different. Of course, you don't need to put one, two, three, four, five here. You can put them A, B, C, D, E, F. You can call them sunny, rainy, cloudy, whatever. Yeah, but the way to use rent, rent between, and look up are just like that.